Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'd like to start by first acknowledging and thanking Chancellor Hickswa, members of the Montana Board of Regents, faculty, and staff who are present today. Thank you for all that you do and have done for us students, and for this opportunity you presented me to speak to everyone here today. Now, class of 2023, congratulations on working, studying, not sleeping, consuming an insane amount of caffeine, and ultimately persevering to get to this point. We did it! But, but now what? What are we aiming at with our lives? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, is a quote from Michael Scott. Oh wait, nope, Wayne Gretzky. It's a little office joke for everybody. It's a quote from one of the greatest hockey players of all time, Wayne Gretzky. But if Mr. Gretzky were to have taken all his shots aiming at the bench of players rather than the actual hockey goal, he for sure would have missed 100% of the shots he did take rather than scoring the 1,072 career goals he made in the NHL. You see, what Mr. Gretzky aimed at was just as important, if not more important, than the amount of shots he took. Are we just shooting shots in the completely wrong direction, hoping to score? Or are we aiming at the one right goal? We can only score when we aim at the right target. And we can only achieve a life well lived when we follow the right pursuit. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mason Powell. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming, and have been studying for my business management degree here at MSUB for the past four years. I played on the baseball team for my first three years here have been a part of an awesome Christian campus ministry called InterVarsity, have had countless weird experiences in the dorms, and I mean countless really, really weird experiences in the dorms. Like I saw and smelled things that, like most people living there, I just shrugged off and said, eh, that's dorm life. I also got married to my amazing wife this past summer, who is one of the greatest joys in my life, made many friends who have come and gone, and have changed and grown more than I could ever have imagined during my time in college. But to be honest, I'm a pretty normal dude. I'm not a genius or someone who has a new scientific discovery that's gonna change the world. I was an average baseball player that worked hard, but wasn't insanely talented. I'm mainly a student like you all, who took tests, complained about workloads, and trying to figure out the meaning of life. I'm one who's excited, yet kind of nervous, about what the unknown future holds. So today, I'm not speaking at you, but rather, I'm listening with you to the words of wisdom I've been taught and the life lessons I've experienced myself. As I began preparing for this speech, I started by trying to understand what the word commencement even means. To disappoint all the English teachers I've had in my life, I had no idea what it meant. So I did a really thorough, in-depth, intense, and detailed research analysis of this word by trusting the first definition of commencement I found on my iPhone. And I learned that commencement means a beginning or start. We've had these moments before in life. We graduate kindergarten, about to start the first grade. We join a new team or club with a desire to have fun and meet some new friends. We crack open a brand new book with excitement and hope for a good story. We begin a new relationship with someone, hoping they're gonna be our one true love. And we graduate from college, about to start our life with a new degree under our belts. These new beginnings are exciting and scary all at once because we enter into these new moments hoping to find joy, fulfillment, purpose, and happiness. And yet these new beginnings can sometimes be scary because what if we don't find what we're looking for? What if the story we read is a big disappointment? What if the relationship we begin ends terribly? What if we don't find what I believe every single human being innately desires, that joy, belonging, and fulfillment we were looking for? You see, at this point, I could copy the standard advice others give to our graduating shoes, like, trust your heart and success will come to you, which Disney movies love to say, or be the master of your own fate, or one of my favorite ones I'll say in a perfect Rocky Balboa accent, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. 
While there is some good sprinkled within these quotes and sayings, I believe if I were to stand up here today and just tell you to look deep inside and trust and follow our hearts, or we can be whatever we want to be in life, or we should just keep swimming and keep on keeping on when times get tough, I would be doing us all a great injustice. You see, there was once a boy who had big dreams to change the whole world. He was intelligent, cunning, and a great speaker. As he grew up, he was disciplined, worked harder than anyone else, and he was determined to succeed. He followed his heart and his dreams and became a leader of a great nation. He grabbed his destiny by the tail and rose to be what he always wanted to be. When times got hard and others doubted him, he kept pressing on and persevering. His new ideas and confidence persuaded people, and his success was prominent. What an awesome story and an awesome, meaningful life, right? He achieved his dreams, followed his heart, and didn't let anybody kick him down. But our outlook on this man's story takes a turn when I tell you his name was Adolf Hitler, the one who we all know committed terrible atrocities during World War II. Now, I know this is an extreme example, I know but it sheds light on the fact that sometimes we can't trust our hearts. We shouldn't be whatever we wanna be, and success isn't always the best. This common advice he seemed to follow, and our culture prescribes, can't be the preeminent advice to follow, right? Just follow our hearts, be whatever we wanna be, and persevere through failures doesn't seem to be the best advice one could give, does it? The shocking realization should make us reconsider the advice we pick up and listen to, because even an archer's well-intended shot can be destructive if aimed at the wrong target. So then, what is the best advice to follow and listen to as we begin this new journey of life? What is the target we should be aiming at? If insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, which humanity seems to be doing to try and fix all the brokenness in this world, what should we be doing differently as humans to change our lives and make an impact for the better? When I first came to MSUB to play baseball, I thought I was going to rock the baseball world. I would always step up to the plate, look at the pitcher throwing at me, and say to him in my head, you're nothing. I'm the best baseball player ever. I'm going to embarrass you. And usually, I'd end up embarrassing myself more than I would the pitcher. For example, one time, my cocky self went up to bat, and I told myself I was going to swing no matter what at the next pitch because I thought I knew the pitcher's exact plan. Instead, I ended up swinging at a wild pitch that was going to hit me in the front of my leg, and when I opened up to swing, the ball ended up hitting me in the, well, you could probably guess where, and it was terrible. It was terrible. I would have labeled that attitude as self-confidence, when it was, in reality, destructive pride. I would find myself after every game and every baseball season feeling like I didn't measure up. I could have done better. I didn't outperform my teammates ahead of me, and I felt like a constant failure. Maybe you felt this way before with something in your life, too. Rather than having baseball be about making friends, being a good example to younger kids, having fun, learning hard work, and staying in shape, I tried making it into my own personal Mason Worship Center. Making my pride the guiding light of my life led to a never-ending pursuit of dissatisfaction. And this leads to the first truth I have learned. We ought to think of ourselves less and think of others more. We should think of ourselves less and think of others more. Now hear me closely. I'm not saying to think less of ourselves but rather think of ourselves less. This idea was one I read in a book written by a renowned author named C.S. Lewis, who also wrote the Chronicles of Narnia series. C.S. Lewis also says this about pride. Pride gets no pleasure out of having something, only out of having more than the next person. We say that people are proud of being rich, clever, or good-looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or cleverer are better looking than others. If everyone else became equally rich or clever or good looking, there'd be nothing to be proud about. 
In a social media world where our self-image and ego are everything, this truth is all the more real to our generation. Heck, our culture preaches and prescribes self-idolization. But friends, a self-centered life is an empty life. And we often forget that the universe does not revolve around us. Even basic science will tell us that. But I have seen and experienced true joy from an alternative, from others and myself following the wisest person to ever walk the face of the earth when he said, treat others how you would like to be treated. So simple and yet so profound. Rather than running after our own desires all the time, if we thought about ourselves less and cared for others more, we'd have a massive positive impact. There is no neutral option. We all focus on and prioritize something. And I'm suggesting that we focus less on ourselves and more on those around us. Even though it may seem kind of backwards, you have to give in order to receive, it's one of the staples of effective and true change for others and ourselves. And this should not be a tit for tat endeavor. Caring for and considering those around us more than we do ourselves is a solution to dissatisfied pride, regardless of how others may respond. And if you don't believe me, give it a try and then come to your conclusions. So first, we ought to start thinking of ourselves less and treat others with love, kindness, and respect like we'd want ourselves. The second thing that I have learned is that through self-control, there is the truest form of freedom. Through self-control, there is the truest form of freedom. My dad, who grew up in hot and humid Texas, once told me a story of when he was playing football. He said on this specific day, it was terribly, terribly hot. Wearing all his football gear and sweating profusely, he told me he had a heat stroke. At this point, all he wanted to do was to jump into the coldest body of water he could to cool down. And for some reason, which all you kinesiology and science majors will be appalled with, the trainers for the team decided to put him in an ice bath. When one goes from extremely hot to extremely cold too quickly, they can go into shock. And my dad said on that day, he was very, very close from going into shock and potentially not being able to breathe, which could have been deadly. You see, even though all he wanted to do was cool down, sometimes following our hearts and desires can be deadly, more harmful than good. If my dad were to have passed away that day, the greater freedom of longer life, my sister and I's births, and so much more would have been lost. Rather than giving into our heart's desires that are more often than not misguided, I have learned one of the greatest virtues of life is self-control. Even with the seemingly mundane choices we make, the decision and impulses we follow are often like ice baths to our heat strokes. This does not mean that we should not dream and strive in our lives, but rather dream and strive towards what is best and not necessarily after all our immediate impulses. Sometimes our instincts and impulses result in unwise actions. And this is why self-control, it's really hard. Trust me, I have failed plenty in this pursuit. I'm not prescribing perfection but rather trying to live out of the reality of our imperfection when it comes to following our desires. It requires us to be more thoughtful about our words and actions. It also requires us to be more reflective of our past words and past actions. Contrary to some people's beliefs, with proper self-control, there is the truest form of freedom. When a fire is controlled in a fireplace, it gives warmth, light, and it's useful for things like cooking, foraging, and so much more. But when a fire is wild and unrestrained, it's destructive, harmful, and nowhere near as beneficial as the contained fire. Friends, the greatest joy and freedom are found through self-control and not always following our heart's desires. If we are selfless rather than selfish and self-controlled rather than impulsive reactors, this leads to one final question. For what? Why should we be selfless? Why should we be more self-controlled? Yes, statistics can back me up on the benefits of following the advice I stated, but is that it? Is that the only reason why? Friends, the final lesson I have learned and want to share with you all is that hope is the lighthouse of our lives. Hope is the lighthouse of our lives. There is a worker here at MSUB that greeted me and countless others every day with the warmest smile and most genuine interest 
when we come into the cafeteria or on campus. His name is Rick. Rick makes it his duty to make sure you feel seen and cared about. If I had a terrible day, I could always count on seeing Rick in the cafeteria to cheer me up. One day, I thanked Rick for always being so kind to me, and he told me this, I just love you guys so much. You students are the reason I love and work my job. You all make my day every time I see you. Rick loves working the job he does because of his genuine compassion for people. His hope and ultimate desires shape what he says, how he lives, what he does, and what he doesn't do. In the same way, what we hope in does the same. And with the first example I gave you all today of the horrific World War II leader, we all know following some lighthouse lanterns can lead to shipwrecks, while others can lead to safe paths to shore. And I cannot stand up here today without sharing my hope and my lighthouse that I truly believe is the only lighthouse option that leads to the fulfillment we all seek after. I believe with all my being that we have infinity written on our hearts. We all have infinite pits of desires within us that can only be fulfilled by an infinite something. You know what I mean by this. Even the best relationships don't satisfy us, hence divorce rates and sappy breakup songs. We never have enough money or things to be truly content. If only I made 20K rather than 15K. If only I made 50K rather than 20K. If only I made 100K rather than 50K, then I would, et cetera, et cetera. And often the greatest moments of our lives just leave, leave us longing for more. And friends, I wholeheartedly have seen and believe that an infinite God is the only solution to this problem. Not just the idea of an infinite God, but the true infinite God. My hope in guiding light is the fact that I'm imperfect, but there's a perfect God who can fix all my brokenness and the world's brokenness. I live my life out of the truth that myself in this world can never fill that infinite desire, but only God can. I can never be perfect enough, but there was one who was perfect on my behalf, God himself, who came and is coming to save and deliver me and mankind out of pure love and undeserved mercy. Rather than striving to earn approval and significance, which is a never-ending, unfulfilling pursuit like pride, I am able to live out of the reality that my imperfect self is perfectly loved and worth enough. Not because of anything I have done or can do, but wholly because of what God has done for me and will do for me. Friends, this hope I have is open and available for everybody for absolutely free. If you want to hear more about this hope as a Christian that I have, feel free to talk to me after the ceremony or look into what is known as the gospel. And even if you may disagree with the hope that I have, this should make you consider what hope you have. Because money and power fade. Jobs get long and boring, friends change, and family doesn't last forever. So what is your hope? It's vital to figure that out because hope is the lighthouse of our lives. Friends, there is no neutrality with our lives and our decisions. We all serve ourselves or others. We all constantly give in to our misguided hearts, or we don't. And we all hope in something. There is no neutrality. Again, and if insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, are you and I going to change? Going to stop following and doing what humanity has always done that has led us to not so promising results? Thinking of ourselves less, being self-controlled, and setting our hope, hopes towards the right lighthouse are the words of wisdom and the beginnings of change I have for myself and you all as we commence, see how I know what that word means now, I looked it up, as we commence this next new chapter of our lives. Friends, we've worked so hard to be where we're at today. The education we received over the years and even today are a gift and a privilege. But what will we do next? I really believe we can change the world, make a difference, and flip the script on our own and others' lives. Not by following the same old path like the majority of the world and humankind, but by following the right path that isn't easy, but infinitely more worth it. To redirect our paths takes a lot of self-examination, but I truly believe self-examination is where we must start. And please, make sure to thank those who have helped and guided you to be where you are today. Give your parents the largest hug you can, like I will after this. Love you, Mom and Dad, wherever you are. 
Thank you. Love you. Email that professor who really believed in you. Or tell your friends how much they've impacted you. Because we all have belly buttons as proof and reminders that we are dependent human beings that could not be where we are today without those who have helped us along the way. And as we leave from here, let's re-examine what goal we're aiming at with our lives. Because we all aim and shoot at something. But unlike Wayne Gretzky, we don't have 5,088 shots to take. Instead, we only have one shot with our one life. And we can only score when we aim at the right target. And we can only achieve a life well lived, feel true joy, change lives, and attain unending fulfillment when we follow the right pursuit. Congratulations, class of 2023. God bless you all.